If you struggle with intrusive thoughts, then this video is for you. My name is Micheline, I'm a licensed therapist, and I'm gonna teach you just how to get through these thoughts. Intrusive thoughts can be really scary, and they're usually intrusive because they're not pleasant, and they're a source of shame for so many people. I'm about to give you a trigger warning because some of the intrusive thoughts that I'm about to list may be a little bit too much for some. Feel free to skip ahead to the tips portion of this video. So here are some of the intrusive thoughts that I've heard from some clients and people, and some I've even had myself. So here we go. I'm an evil person. I should throw this baby out of the window. I am thinking about driving my car off the road. I'm having inappropriate sexual thoughts about a minor. What if I'm a pedophile? I can stab someone with this knife. I don't really love my family. I'm going to hurt my pet. As you can see, these thoughts are scary and People from time to time may have thoughts like these, but people who really struggle with anxiety and intrusive thoughts have these on a consistent basis. They're not just passing thoughts. They come in and they come out, but they continue to intrude on their lives and make them feel like they have no control. As you can see, some of the ones I mentioned can be a source of shame because people who struggle with these types of intrusive thoughts start to think that maybe there's something wrong with them. The thing is that most people who have these types of intrusive thoughts, even the worst ones that you heard, or even if you've had worse than the ones I even listed, do not act or have any urge to act on these thoughts. And that's why they're so uncomfortable because they really go against what the person feels about themselves, like who they think they are. And they're having these intrusive thoughts that have nothing to do with who they are as humans. So they are fearful to talk about them. They are fearful to admit that they're having them. And oftentimes they even keep them from their therapist because they're afraid that the therapist might have to report some of these. And here is where it's really important. Therapists are trained to understand the difference between a thought and urges to actually harm another human being. So if you're someone who struggles with intrusive thoughts like the ones I named, or maybe some that are worse than what I named, I want you to know that for the most part, if you have a trained professional working with you, they will not report you for these thoughts. Instead, they will help you work through them. So please keep that in mind and be gentle with yourself and those around you. Okay, so let's get into some tips that I have that I use with my clients who talk to me about their intrusive thoughts. So if you struggle with intrusive thoughts, what I want you to do is to always acknowledge that what's happening is an intrusive thought. I want you to say to yourself, this is an intrusive thought. And that's the first step because we need to be able to differentiate our day-to-day -day thoughts, like I need to eat, I'm hungry, I need to go to work, I love this person, and the difference between those intrusive thoughts that come in and kind of just bother us. So, ooh, I have a baby in my hand, I could totally throw this baby out the window. So as soon as that happens, you can say to yourself, this is an intrusive thought. Tip number two, once you've said this is an intrusive thought, I want you to go ahead and say to yourself, I'm having the thought followed by whatever your intrusive thought is. So for instance, I'm having the thought that I wanna throw this baby out the window. I'm having the thought that I could totally stab someone with this knife. I'm having the thought that I wanna drive my car off the side of the road. I'm having the thought that I want to hurt my pet. Now, why this is important is because again, it's another level of telling ourselves that these are thoughts. So we've acknowledged that they are intrusive thoughts and now we're creating a separation between ourselves, who we are and that thought. So this is called a diffusion tip or an unhooking tip and it comes from acceptance and commitment therapy where we try to just separate ourselves from that thought. So we're not trying to challenge it or replace it or fight with it or completely erase it. All we're doing is teaching our brain that, hey, this is a thought. If you try that, you will feel a sense of separation. It'll give you a slight sense of comfort because at that moment, what will happen is your fight or flight responses will kind of go down a little bit because we are activating the prefrontal cortex by saying, I'm having a thought. We're acknowledging something in the present moment within our awareness that in itself helps get us slightly out of fight or flight. And then by adding that phrase, I'm having the thought, whatever the thought is, again, it's another reminder that what you're, what you're having is a thought and it's not actually a fact. Tip number three, do not try to push the thought away. 
This is a very, very important part. So usually what I'll see with my clients is they will try that I'm having the thought and they'll say the thought and then they'll realize that the thought is still there and they're like, wait, what? wasn't this supposed to take the thought away? And the answer is no, it's not supposed to take the thought away. Again, the purpose of this is to help the thought and you create a separation from each other. But the thought might still be there and that is okay because now you know that that thought is a thought, it's not a fact and that it has nothing to do with who you are as a person. And the more you try to push something away, the more it will persist. So if I tell you to not think about something, it's like when we tell kids don't push the red button, the first thing they want to do is push the red button. We do not like to think in negatives, our brains do not like to think in don't do because then we just want to do. So what we want to do instead is remember, acknowledge the thought as a thought, create a separation between you and the thought, I'm having the thought, and then turn your attention to whatever it was you were doing. Go about your day. And each time that intrusive thought comes back in, you continue steps one and two. I know that that might be exhausting at first, but trust me. Over time, you will be teaching your brain that that thought is not important, that you're not worried about it because you know you're not going to act on it. And what that means is over time, that thought is going to diminish naturally. But I don't want you to think about that right now because it's very easy to get caught up in just having it go away. So really focus on steps one, two, and three with just doing those diffusion or unhooking activities and see what shifts for you in a few weeks. And tip number four. I want you to try to reduce stress in your life. If you are someone who struggles with anxiety or intrusive thoughts, then it's normal for those thoughts to become even more intrusive when we're under a lot of stress and when we're kind of avoiding ourselves. We're not really giving time to our own personal needs and self-care. So what I want you to do is to make sure that you put yourself first. I want you to take a look at your sleep hygiene, your eating habits, your exercise routine, just having time for yourself and your hobbies and make sure that you're including those things in there. It's really important that you allow time for yourself to feel your feelings. It's very common for all of us to not want to deal with unwanted emotions or thoughts, but it's really important that we do actually give space to them because the more that we bottle things up, the more stress is gonna build within our nervous system and the more likely these intrusive thoughts are going to persist. Although it can sound extremely scary, just sit down with yourself and just feel sadness, anger, shame, guilt, whatever feeling you're trying to just push away, over time, you are going to actually become more mentally resilient and you're going to have fewer intrusive thoughts. It takes a little bit of work up front. It takes some discomfort up front. But the more discomfort you allow yourself to sit in up front, the less discomfort you'll have in the future. It's kind of like that, you know, work hard now, play later kind of thing, but for our minds. So please do not ignore this step. I know this is the scariest thing for so many of us, do it slowly, do it in increments of a few minutes and slowly expand. You can use journaling, you can use music to process your feelings, art. It doesn't just have to be you sitting there in a quiet room just thinking about your feelings or what's going on in your life. You can get creative with it, but just don't give up on feeling what is actually going on in your life. And finally, my last tip, if these thoughts are too overwhelming and you've tried all of these things and it's not helping or maybe it's getting worse or maybe you just feel like you're not functioning well, you can't go to work, you can't go to school, you can't go out with friends because of these thoughts, that is a sign that it's time to see a professional. Having a professional to help guide you through this can be really important because the intrusive thoughts could have resulted from maybe a trauma that you experienced or maybe the stress is just too high and you just need somebody there to help guide you through these things, to process what's going on in in your life, to help you sit down with your feelings like I was talking about, to help you unhook from your thoughts in session so that it becomes easier for you outside of session. So make sure that you do get help from a professional if you feel like nothing's really helping you. And that was it. Those are my five tips. I know they sound very simple and they kind of are the way we talk about them, but it does take some work and effort on your part because you have to consistently do these things over and over and over and over again. And if you do, you can trust me, you will see 
that it will not be as distressing for you. I cannot promise that the thoughts will go away or disappear, and that's not our goal. Our goal is to go about our day recognizing that these thoughts don't mean anything about who we are, about our life or our personalities or even our urges. So they are there, let them be there, go about your day, and maybe in the long run they will disappear because they're not really at the forefront of your attention anymore. I hope that you enjoyed this video or got something out of this video or it was helpful. Try these things out for a few weeks. Comment below what your thoughts are. Do you think these things might help you? Have you tried something else for your intrusive thoughts that have helped you that I didn't mention in this video? I'm always learning from you just as much as you're learning from me. So comment them below because you never know who could be reading that comment and who might find it helpful. And maybe I'll include it in my next video. So thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.